Welcome, in this video we're learning how to install critical infrastructure services like DNS. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our standalone to machine. So this guy is going to be the machine that we set to host things like DNS and DHCP. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged in. You'll notice it's not joined to the domain, and that is OK. So what we're going to have to do is double check our IP settings first. We need to make sure that the DNS is set to domain controller 1 and domain controller 2. All right, we want to make sure that we can ping our domain, and we can. One last thing is, you'll notice it's not part of our domain. We need to have it joined to our domain, because this server is going to be acting as a standalone machine. In the other videos, we did Active Directory, uh, some version of installation with Active Directory. So that's why we didn't have to join the other ones to the domain. Administrator. All right, there we go. We have to do a quick restart. All right, there we go. Let's get logged back in. It's part of our domain now, so we actually want to sign into the ACE domain as administrator. It will set up a new desktop because it is, for this sentence and purposes, a new uh, user being logged in. All right, let's go ahead, add a role. We want to be adding, I don't want to restart for VMware. We want to be adding the DNS role. So find DNS, there we go. Install. The installation will only take a few moments. All right, there it goes. No restart necessary. The role was installed. We actually want to go ahead and configure the role. It's really funny because all, before we did all of this, updates were fully up, uh, were ran. We were shown to have all updates. All right, you're going to notice that we don't have either a forward or a lookup zone. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add them. So we can create a copy of a zone that can be updated directly. Or we can create a copy of a zone that exists. So we're going to be doing a secondary zone. Zone name. Let's hop over to DC1. Let's look at our domain, our DNS there. Our domain name, or our zone name, should be ace.local. So the zone name here will be ace.local. IP address 192.168.1.10. Well, numlock was disabled. One nine, you know what? DC1. DC2. No IPv6 addresses are there. That's okay. We'll delete the appropriate IPv6 uh, items. Finish. And there we have our domain. You'll notice that 
once you click on it, it doesn't actually load. That's because it's in the process of doing a zone transfer. What that means is basically it's a clever way to say copy. We're going to turn on our child domain. Because we also want to set up our child domain. All right. I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes, just double check the time, and yeah. Well, it's been a little while since I've had to do this, so. It actually won't let you uh, do the zone until you allow the zone transfer. So back on DC1. Properties. Not what I wanted. On our actual domain, properties, zone transfers. We want to allow zone transfers. You can set the addresses if you want to control who's going to have access to these zones, or if you want to control where they're going to transfer to. For now, any server is fine. You know what? No, it's not. Let's do this the right way. IP address or name. DC1, DC2, there is no IPv6 address there, standalone 1, you'll notice that we can't do standalone one because it doesn't have the authoritative permissions to do that. Standalone two. And again, standalone two does not have the permissions to do that. So I don't want to mess with the authentic, uh, that portion of that right now. Only servers listed on the name server tab. Those are these two. So for now, I'm going to do to any server. Once the zone copy has been completed, then we can secure it later. All right, so once we've done that, let's go back over to our standalone. We can transfer from master. That will force a reload. That will take a few moments, so again, be patient. All right, it took about 40 seconds, but it, it did finally load. It also loaded the sub or the child zone for NV. And there is our standalone one machine. So we are good with our forward lookup zone being loaded on our new domain controller, sorry, our new DNS server. It's not a domain controller. It will not allow you to authenticate against it because it is not a domain controller. It only is managing DNS. All right, so what about our reverse lookup zone? We have to do the same thing. Let's go ahead and Zone transfers, allow zone transfers. You'll notice all of those guys are there. I'm going to keep this op open up on DC1 because I want to point out a few things. We're going to do a, again a secondary zone, IPv4. We can be loading this off of DC1. No IPv6. Or off of DC2. Again, no IPv6. And give it a second. 
canister for master, it will load again. All right, took a second, but there it is. So now we have both our forwarding zones and our reverse lookup zones. All right, so let's go back to the security question. On DC1, we want to secure so this, so only the appropriate zone transfers can take place. All right, so we want to make sure that DC1 can do it. DC2 can do it. Again, no IPv6 address, that's fine. Stand alone 2 can do it. Oh, well, no IPv6. Why can standalone 2 now do it? Because again, they have to now have the DNS forwarder there. Can we do standalone 1? Standalone 1 does not have this zone. I'm not going to apply the security. I just wanted to point that out. What Standalone 1 has is this guy. It has the NV. We can create a new uh, secondary zone that will actually be NV, because this is a sub zone of our parent zone, but that's kind of past this part. Again, we're gonna talk more in the DNS when we do the official uh, Microsoft Moloch videos for server 2013, or for 2016. But for now, this is basic DNS setup in a nutshell. Thank you.